I'm in the middle of the zone in Phoenix. Yeah, he fucking killed his girlfriend last night. Hundreds of tents and people living here, doing life, and we're here to explore. I died five times and I've come back alive. They should have released El Chapo, cuz. I just buried my daughter last month. This many pills can get you your Hello folks, I'm Tommy G, and you might be wondering how I got here. I've been spending lots of time thinking about the problem of homelessness in America. The causes for it, potential solutions for it, it's a very sad and difficult issue. I learned that downtown Phoenix is home to one of the largest homeless camps in the country. Over 1,000 people occupy the stretch of city called The Zone. In the Zone. The Zone. The Zone. The Zone. It's from Jefferson to Jackson. This is a place that assaults your senses. You are greeted by filth feces, addiction, suffering, and mental illness. But also here are humans, many of which have survived unbelievably sad circumstances. When I did get raped by the gang rape, you guys, it was in the morning when I was going to school. By the time they were done, it was nighttime. We as a society have to figure out what to do about places and people like this. So today, we go boots on the ground in usual fashion to learn more about this and capture the story of The Zone. I'm Tommy, I'm here with Chase. And what's your dog's name? Riley. Riley. Where are we right now? Phoenix. Arizona, Phoenix? Yeah. What do they call this place? Cass. What does that mean and what does that stand for? I have no idea to be honest. Okay. How long you been here for? It's two weeks. How'd you find yourself here? It's like a free place to set up a tent and like be able to sleep and stuff without getting in trouble like outside, you know? Of all places you could have been, how'd you find this? Oh, I just like walked upon it. What do you do in your day-to-day -day life? Look for work, play with my dog. Is it dangerous at all here? Oh yeah, I personally don't go walk around over there. The insane motherfucker sitting over on the corner killed his girlfriend last night. Thank you. One week ago, they found a girl in that motherfucker. Burned up in that motherfucking dump. Two suspects after a burned body is found inside of a dumpster near downtown Phoenix in the homeless encampment called The Zone. Okay, we're gonna get checked. Probably. Probably gonna tell you to turn that shit off for sure. What life events happened for you to get here? My girlfriend broke up with me and then times were hard between me and my family. My mom passed away, you know, and right. so I started getting into drugs, I'm not gonna lie, you know what I mean? I'm no longer continuing using those drugs, so I'm trying to get better, you know, because I just got out of jail like two months ago, you know, so these last two months I've been trying real hard to get my life back on track. Do you have anyone here that you'd want to introduce us to? <laughs> yeah, let me grab them real quick, okay. right? Okay. I'm Tommy, nice to meet Tommy, you. Tommy, Dennis. Describe yourself in three words. Versatile, okay. perseverant, curious. That's probably one of my primary ones too. Is life here, would you say, is it risky? Is it dangerous at all? Honestly, it's to the extent that you make it so. Do you carry anything, long, with weapons with you or anything like that? You don't need to carry like a gun per se, but it's like still a, best to carry like, like a shank or like, you know, something to <laughs> someone with. <laughs> if you mind your own business and try to do the right thing, you're really not gonna encounter any danger. Appreciate you guys, yeah, okay? Thank, thank, you. thank you. What's life like here? Different, rough. Who's your friend over there? That's Chica. Chica? What do you got on your your chest there with the tag? Oh, it's a badge. Is that where you can you like get access to resources and stuff like that? Yeah, we moved down here from Illinois. Oh yeah, whereabouts yeah. in Illinois? It's Carbondale. Really. Carbondale? Yeah. That's a friendly one? Yeah. Look at her tongue. So what led you guys to be in here? No. We got robbed twice and we got kicked out of our apartment. What percent of people here would you say do some sort of drug? Everyone. What's the most common drug? Fentanyl. Damn, that's really creeped into this country, huh? Yeah. How would you guys say your childhood was? Mine was okay. Mine wasn't very good. What made it not so good? Did you ever find a way to escape that situation? I ran away from home when I was 11. You ran away from home when you were 11? I never went back. Well, did you have any siblings? No. Did your dad try and touch them too? It wasn't my dad, it was my brother. Your brother? Did he ever get held accountable for what he did to you? No. He done it to his own kids. You were five when this happened? Yep. How old was he? He was 11 years old and he was 15. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting us hear your story. How are you doing today? It's doing pretty good. I'm here on SSDI, Social Security mm -hmm. Income. I'm getting it now because I can't be working right now, so I'm not a burden on the government or nothing. But I will be receiving welfare once uh, the payout ends from what I worked into it. How are you survive out here? Um, right now, I go into CAS, get what I need, like a clothing on emergency clothing, showers, food, breakfast and lunch. I stay here right now. I got that with a friend. I'm a prodigy of some sort because mm -hmm. I got established with my college degrees at a very young age. How old were you when you got your college degrees? I was five. You were five years old? Really? Yeah. Wow. 
minor in a few departments. And what did you do with that? And I got into the military at eight to be like thought of to be enlisted, but I was enlisted enough to be a participant okay. as a, a higher level of a dependent. What did you do in the military? I was cook. Huh? What did you do after you were a cook? Out. I was a preschool teacher. How old were you then? I was 23. Okay. All right, well, thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for hearing me out. What are you guys doing? We're just giving people stories and talking to folks. Oh, you guys are talking to folks? We're documentary filmmakers, yeah. I'm Tommy and I'm here with... Uh, Sheila Nunes. And where are we right now, Sheila? We're downtown Phoenix at CAST. This is the last four days I've been here and there's been three deaths. Is it like, tough being a woman here? It is tough. Are women under constant pressure for sexual assault and stuff like that? Me, I was and it was by surprise. Like, I was thirsty and really tired. He gave me some water and then at the last cup, of a, he gave me, hey, you have some milk. So I drank some milk and I felt something like, go down my throat and I, it was too late, I already swallowed it. Three days later, I woke up and I didn't know why, but I was like, oh. How was your childhood? Is there anything in particular you want to cover or talk about? Oh yeah, it's gonna be really hard though. Due to the graphic nature of her story, we cannot share the whole thing in this video. When they were done, they threw me out in the park, she could park after that. I just kind of went to the park and washed up and then I fell asleep by a church and then after that they called the authorities and that's when my mom finally was like, oh my gosh, my daughter, she didn't really care. She just said that I'm going to make sure I report you as a runaway, that way I know I'm not going to get in trouble for what you do. Well, What's your hope for the future? I wanted to be a hairstylist, makeup, and just be like a fashion. I, I can see that. you got some art going on in your eyes right now. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys sharing your story. Thank you so much, okay? Just to give you a little idea of what's going on, like there's people passed out everywhere, there's people shouting. You definitely have to keep checking who's behind you. Imagine raising your family at that house. That's nuts. What y'all fucking feeling? God damn. Real estate. So people can be hostile. Tell me what this area is like. Is this sketchy? People that can't afford to live life, you feel me? And that's why they're out here, you yeah, feel me, in tents. They're out here, they're just trying to find somewhere to be, you feel me? What would you do if you were mayor about this place? I would get rid of all this. I would give these people somewhere to go, you feel me? I know they can, you feel me? Because this little shelter place is not it. I don't even know why they even got this out here. That's why Phoenix is getting worse and worse. F*** El Chapo, you feel me? He, why do you say F*** El Chapo? Because That's they should have released him, though. He told him, if y'all don't release me, I'm going to release the blue-eyed demon upon the world. They should have released El Chapo, cuz. Release El Chapo. I just buried my daughter last month. What's going on? What's on your mind right now? Somebody to do something about this. These people need help. They're human beings. We're not pieces of crap. I worked my entire life in this state. I'm from here. I was born here. I'm a retired nurse. These people need help out here, not for people to spit on them and not give a damn about them. Do you know anyone that can show us what it looks like? What a blue looks like? Yeah. No, because ain't no one going to be brave enough. Oh, there you go. That's what that's at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's enough to overdose on? If you take it like that. So how do people consume yeah, that? I smoke it in aluminum foil. Well, okay. How much do they need to get high? One hit. Okay, how much so does that cost? It costs up to dollars. thirty dollars. That one pill is thirty dollars. Sometimes. $30. And how long does that last somebody? Five minutes. Yeah. Okay, my daughter was a methamphetamine user for the last 10, 15 years. At Christmas she told me that she wasn't getting high anymore off of the meth, so she switched to crack cocaine. She got some bad shit. So on a Friday, she overdosed and that crack cocaine was laced mm. with fentanyl. Because people don't usually die from crack cocaine. Right. She was taken to a hospital on a Friday night. They discharged her the next day. She died Sunday morning. I met Are this gal now? three days ago. I said, I'm willing, because I get my social security on the third, I get it every month. I said, I'm willing to get you off the street, get rid of your drugs, get rid of all this bullshit. I said, if you marry me in 10 years, you'll be my beneficiary and you can have all my social security every single month. But Besides what you make working. Did she say yes? She got murdered last night. What? Right here. Right Someone there. got murdered right here. She got night. murdered last night, man. And what? so I've been dealing with this bullshit all fucking day long. She was here helping set up the house yesterday. She is 20, 25 years old. I thought she was 32. She lied to me. But I found out through counseling today how old she was because she'd been over there before. What was your childhood like? Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> what made it horrible? My mom was abusive, my uncle me, my family was abusive. How old were you when your uncle did that? I was uh, five years old, but I kept it a secret till I was 23. I've heard that from a few people now. At a young age by a family member. How common do you think that is around here? It's really common. People can sit here and give you this sob story. 
anybody. They put themselves in a situation because this is what they want to do. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. You don't want to be homeless, go get help. So there's a lot of people that are blaming the government saying there's not enough yeah. resources. Do you think that's bullshit? That's bullshit. You think everyone's here because they're personal choices? Yeah? So if you were mayor, what would you do? I would offer counseling for those who have suffered with grief. A lot of the homelessness has to do with grief. Yeah. And none of it has to do with drugs. A lot of it has to do with grief. Because drugs mask the grief. Exactly. That all is for 20 bucks. Yeah, I have a hookup. Where's your setup? My setup's right there. Oh, next door. Yeah, it's Rick. Don't camcord my ass because it's really big. <laughs> this is normal people live. <laughs> Play it safe. Wow. My condom collection. When you're homeless and you're out here, just take care of your shit. Don't get into trouble. If you do drugs, do them at home. This is a pretty good setup. You still want to come by? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is where I sleep at mostly. Just really an extra space for people that might need it, like coming through or just need a spot for the night. You welcome anybody or what? Yeah. Have you ever said no to a guest? No. Well, uh, give us give us the grand tour, dude. So just to be clear, so this this tent is the special. No, it ain't, it ain't really designated for that. It's really for whatever, but it, it can seek for, but it's more private. Okay. The rest of it is just um, pretty much self-explanatory. How long have you been here, ma'am? Eight months, I think. Okay. Mm. What do you think of, of this place? It sucks. I have to say, they do give us a place to say there's a lot of resources around here if you take them. There's a lot of resources. They'll do anything for you. All you got to do is go out there and get it. What brought you here? Getting evicted in my apartment. Okay, there's a, a guy trying to... Better leave, man. That's yeah. the dude. You know, I already f***ing told you. Oh, shit! You ain't even told these guys? What's what's going on? He fucking killed his girlfriend last night. What? Nobody knows it but f***ing me. Um, hey. We're gonna get out of here so this guy doesn't fucking... Which church do you Uh, Willow Creek. So when you're dealing with very mentally ill folks like this, shit can get really dangerous really fast. The insane motherfucker sitting over on the corner killed his girlfriend last night. When I come back from Fry's last night, walking at 3 o'clock in the morning, her body was laying across the street. It was all fucking ribboned off. Her, her body was fucking chalked out and shit. If the cops don't come and get him off the street tonight, I'm going to kill the motherfucker. Sir, we're going to get out of here, but I wish you the best. Imagine trying to just be on your own porch that you're paying rent for. Endless amounts of people are streaming up and down the street on fentanyl, on crack. I was curious to know how this was affecting business owners in the area. So we stopped in a little sandwich shop and spoke with the owner, Joe, to hear his perspective. It's from uh, the New York Times. We were just in the newspaper. A homeless camp crisis at a sandwich shop's door. But how have you seen the area change? Has it always been like this? No. no. What has it been like witnessing the change? Uh, you know, some people are afraid to come in. Yeah. I can't imagine opening up shop here, investing all I have into a business, and then it gets taken over by... Right. Well, we never had a fence around before, because I've been here for 20-some years, and we never had a fence before. So I guess, you know, I don't know. It's it's crazy. Has anything ever happened here? Any, Not any... really, really, no. Yeah. You know, no, uh, thank God we've been lucky. So Madison Street, which we've been on all day, has become the center of one of the largest homeless encampments in the country with as many as 1,100 people sleeping outdoors. A man was weaving down the sidewalk in the direction of Joe's restaurant with a saw, muttering to himself, then stopping to urinate a dozen feet from Joe's outdoor tables. Like, how do you even keep people coming to a restaurant if there's a man with a rusty saw peeing everywhere? Yep. You've been in this restaurant for 30... Seven years. 37 years. That's a long time to have a business. Most people don't make it a year in business. Probably twice as long as you've been alive. <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> now you have homeless encampments surrounding your business. You have a man with a saw muttering and peeing. <laughs> what is that like? You just have to come to work. Just like you have to go to school or whatever you have to do to succeed. I have to come to work. I have to keep my business going so that someday I can retire. You know, I want to sell it. It was at one time a booming business. Oh and the funny gosh. thing is, now that I'm in the New, New York Times, it's booming again, but for how long? You know what I mean? Mm. There's the excitement of the ad, and people are very sweet, very compassionate. Do you think this issue here boils down to three things? Drugs. Drugs. Fentanyl. Fentanyl. You know, fentanyl. Yeah. Come in the room. We saw some of it. Okay. Mental illness. Mental illness. The crisis with 
rent's going up so much. Hmm. The thing is, we can be compassionate about our situation, but right now this is hitting your livelihood. Like, how are you gonna sell this business? Who would be brave enough to buy it from you? And that's probably your retirement plan, right? Well, yes, of course, you know, obviously, you know what I mean? You know, I, I'm gonna collect social security, but you guys, I don't know if you work for, when, if you work for businesses or something like that, but you get your 401k, you know what I mean? And you match it, you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. So, you know, me, my, my livelihood is this place. This really makes me mad to see you in a situation like this, to dedicate so many years of your life to this. And how is it even allowed that someone can just be shitting on the sidewalk 20 feet away? How, how is that allowed? I don't know. We sued, we sued the city of Phoenix, not wanting any money. We just want our neighborhood back. It's been like this for three, almost three and a half years in a lot of places. It's not that you don't care about homeless people. Right. It's that there's gotta be a separation between being able to live and prosper and having people poop outside your restaurant. What kind of things have you seen that would be? I've seen a poor old man in his underwear, you know, walking with a walker who's on my property. And I go, hey dude, what are you doing? And he goes, mm. says, you need to get off. He started to get off and I came back into my restaurant. And I said, what if he needs help? You know what I mean? I'm so used to this craziness. So he came back out and he's walking down the fence line and I go, do you need help? He goes, yes. So I went and called 911 and they came and they took him away. So Joe, this is called, what's the name of this restaurant? Old Station Sandwich Shop. Old Station. So folks, if you're driving through Phoenix, the Old Station Sandwich Shop, give them business, support them, vote with your dollar. Cause I know that if I was running a sandwich shop here, I'd be f I'd be mad, I'd be mad. If you're in the area, come support delicious wraps, good food, and good people. Thank you. Of course. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. The future of the zone is uncertain. Residents and businesses have sued the city of Phoenix and a judge has issued an order that the zone be cleaned up and disbanded by July 10th. Where will these people go and where will they camp out next? I hope it's not somewhere near you. People have been asking for shorts for a long time. We dropped them. They're on the site right now. Get yours while they last. They look like this and this. So get yours, TommyJimmyGee.com. Hats sold out, but now they're back in stock too. So enjoy yourself, go shopping. And if you like this video, subscribe here and check out this video.